Hello and welcome back to Lore Effect Gaming Plays Wasteland 3. I'm your host, Lord Fantas Wasteland 3 walkthrough video. We're going to go ahead and check out the rest of this rich area. Well, actually, Lucia's home. Then finally, we're head our way to the bazaar. Well, the bazaar exterior. As always, like, comment, and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. And do not forget hit that notification bell so we update and more. Now, last video, we got a step for unwelcome guests done and finish Wolf's Hunt. So now let's go inside this house and loot it up. It feels so empty now. Even when Pa and Ma were traveling, they, they were here. Their spirits filled the place. Now, they do not. Mama used to love sitting in here. She'd be ashamed of the mess it's in now. Damn, Dorsey's weren't content to rip everything up. They had to toss the furniture around, too. Animals. Couldn't even leave my memories of this place alone. My house was the first place the Dorseys went. Probably walked right in through the front door, stole my parents and little brother away, and then took out their anger on the house. No point looking back there. It smashed up even worse, and the Dorseys took everything worth stealing. Mama used to love sitting in here. She'd be ashamed of the mess it's in now. Wow. Daddy really didn't want any Dorsey's to muck around with his cooking supplies. I want the entire Lucia dialogue to be played out. Yeah, this is her home. Still, she's giving us looting rights, though. Well, actually, if you don't bring her with you, I still think you get looting rights. Either way, we're looting everything up. Still, it was a nice backstory about her. I mean, this was, like, really good. Unfortunately, I do not have six in explosives. However, I got enough for a toaster repair. Now I gotta do for Luis's get toaster repair, first aid, and of course, I believe it was, yeah, automatic weapons, and then of course, some, the other one, armor modding. That's a lot though, but still, I'm doing it. All right, we're getting some nice loot. Yeah, now here's the thing. You want to loot everything up as much as possible. And also get someone to repair that toaster. So we're selecting Luis. And she's going to do that. Yeah, the toasters are really useful in this game. Just like the other Wasteland. Well, 2 was a lot more useful so far. Okay, go play the cord. That must be a part of something. I advise not selling it because of one reason. Well, let me explain. You see anything like that? It doesn't say junk. Yeah, hold on to it. You may never know. Well, except for the... Uh, we call gold. Yeah, you sell that like gold nuggets, gold bars. It gives you a lot of cash. But the we call gold plated insulated uh, cord. Yeah, the gold cord. I'll say, keep it. All right. Yeah, this is uh good. This is already good. I'm getting some good stuff already in this uh, game. This is like really nice. So now I'm gonna do is uh check one more area. There is a cassette player tape. Yeah, the uh, cassette player tape. This one, uh, if you're doing the uh, cassette trophy slash achievement, yeah, that's going on my list. Also, I'm looting up some junk and saving up a whole bunch of junk. You see, when Greed gets his next perk, I'm going to get the uh, bar uh, perk stack one, which you get a lot of money. So I'm going to go this direction and uh, loot this uh, thing up, which is the uh, tape. stairs and find the door to the bunker slightly ajar i i listen at the door make uh, a perception roll it's 
awful dark out here. Maybe we should go inside. This was your idea. You said it would be cool to play a game in the park. I got a 15! Do I hear anything? You hear a faint scraping sound inside. Uh, like the sound of a skeletal foot dragging across stone. It's coming closer. Uh, did you hear that? It's just the wind. Ah! A pale dog! There's a pale dog watching us! What? Where? I don't see- It's coming after us! Run! Now, kids, here's your lesson. Number one, never play any knockoff of Dungeon Dragons. Number two, knockoff of Dungeon Dragons are a real thing. Don't play it outside in the park. Yeah, some creature could eat you up. Yeah, those uh, kids, they got definitely eaten up. So I'm taking a long way. I'm explaining what happened in between videos. What was I got a bunch of my characters, a whole bunch of nice weapons. Yeah, they got a nice weapon upgrade. Got a few turns. Yeah, I got about, I think, a total of seven of them. Now, you're asking why the heavy supply. Here's the thing. We're going to enter the bazaar. Now, the bazaar, once you enter the exterior, I believe there's a trigger point you cannot leave. Otherwise, the refugees will uh, die. So, I'm going to be cautious. Great news is there is a shop outside. Once you get inside, it's much uh, better. There's better things to uh, buy. Now, the bazaar, the exterior and interior, difficulty ramped up now if you do an unwelcome guest not the heads or tails ones yeah that difficulty will be there i tested it out for a trophy slash achievement run now it's a little bit easier for me because i got like one two levels and i'm uh, about there i should say so let's go on the world map and listen to our first radio message citizens of colorado this is your patriarch speaking the flame of liberty burns bright in our fair state, but not without help from you. If you would protect that flame, tend it, and keep it burning strong, then join the Colorado Marshals, the defenders of all our freedoms. Visit your local marshal station today and ask them what it takes to join, and make me proud. That radio message is now done. I'm going to show everybody the one of the uh, vendors out here. Good idea to stock up. Last chance, of course. Don't know who you are, but if you ain't looking for trouble, I got some stuff to trade. Well, I ain't the best mechanic in Colorado, but how can I say no after a thorough ass-kissing? Maintain your vehicle and don't stop if you don't have to. These days, a flat tire or a stalled engine could be the end of you, consumed by the elements. And I don't just mean the weather, if you get me. Just some odds and ends I've taken in trade. Might be useful. Now, really quick, there's some nice armor, ammunition, medical supplies. This is a good place to stock up from here on out. Once you get inside the bazaar, well, the exterior, there's only really one shop there. Until you get in, yeah, things are going to get a lot tougher, so get used to it. Sell anything you want to sell off. I'm not going to sell anything in stacks because of one reason. I'm going for that barter perk next for greed. And that barter perk I read on the internet and people are saying, which I, I looked it over, is, yeah, when you sell a stack of items... You get a nice bonus out of it. Yeah, that's more uh, Colorado dollars. You want that definitely in this game. It's like gold in this game, basically. Yeah, currency rules the world, especially Colorado dollars in Wasteland 3. So follow the path I am going. Yeah, just keep on going to the bazaar. Yeah, that place is fun. Yeah, I, I, I love the saying of that one. It's really good, too. So just keep on going like the direction I'm going. Wait, not that direction. That leads you to the uh, caravan. Just keep on going. You will hear a radio message. That means you're close on by. Huddle on. My name is Flab. And it is my pleasure to bid you welcome to the bazaar. Come in. For the night air is chill. Your wallet head and our goods plentiful. Bring us your wealthy, your rich, your full purses. And if you can't afford it, just stay away. This has been a Monster Army production. 
<laughs> there you go everyone yeah we uh did it we went through now this is the same guy i talked to last time it's a little bit of a delay on the playstation 4 which is weird it kind of cut off the sound a little bit still we found the same guy like i said last chance i don't need anything from him i was just seeing if there's something else he does appear often so that's the uh, good news so what i'm gonna do is just keep on going just keep on moving on ahead if there's any random encounters i am definitely going to skip it for this uh, let's play series hey guys i just want to get to the action okay you see these uh we call it crates you either have to disarm them or uh what do you call it get some junk like i did and look at that and he spotted jewels i would have fought but like i said i want to get to the bazaar really quick and I am not keen to waste my ammunition. I have enough for uh, at least the exterior. But here's the thing. I got to be really careful. And we have arrived at the bazaar. So once we go inside, there'll be a person we will have to talk to. So I'm going to let the conversation go on. I'll return afterwards. Madam, please. I assure you, your bazaar shopping experience is completely safe. You may have folks fooled, Ananda. But not me. I know something is fishy here, and I'm leaving. Shame. Ah, over here, friends. Welcome. Salutations and assorted felicitations. Welcome to the bazaar, the marketplace of the unusual. I have not seen you here before. Know this, the bazaar can be found underneath our feet buried by layers of snow. Access is restricted to the lucky few who possess an entrance pass. You can purchase an entrance pass at the door from our esteemed hosts, the Monster Army. Or, if you lack the funds, simply find an established merchant to vouch for you. Oh, a misunderstanding, I assure you. There have been some troubles in the bazaar of late. But nothing our esteemed hosts, the Monster Army, can't resolve. I assure you, inside the bazaar awaits a satisfying and secure shopping experience. Up the ramp, you'll find the door to the bazaar, covered by a vehicle. My name is Ananda Rabindranath, Mannerite missionary, merchant, and your humble servant. I was assigned to answer any questions you may have. Felicitations. It is simple. To get inside, you need an entrance pass. You can purchase one at the door, or find an established bazaar merchant to vouch for you. Any bazaar merchant. Of course, they are usually found inside the bazaar, not out here. In the encampment behind me, you could find some hopefuls looking to get in. Perhaps if you can aid them, they can aid you. Would that I could. But we are limited in how often we can vouch for outsiders. In theory, yes. But those of us who have a past tend to safeguard it with our lives, so it is highly unlikely you would get to use another person's pass. I have heard of people giving their entrance passes to family members. Perhaps you have a rich uncle. Occasionally people disappear in the nearby ruins, and strangers acquire their pass. I'm sure I don't need to say this behavior is most untrustworthy and impolite. I can only hope I will have the answers you seek. It is common wisdom to keep one's mouth shut when one lacks courteous things to say. Truly, I find the very idea of smuggling people revolting. With that said, if I were a less discreet person, I'd suggest that you drive out to the old parking garage down the road to the north. Who knows? You may find your answers there. Ah, I thank you. It is a pleasure to meet people of taste, a true rarity in these uncivilized lands. I endeavor to provide the teachings of Mr. Manners to those inside the bazaar. Alas, they seem to prefer that I spread the good word out here instead. A folly, I think. But who am I to question our gracious hosts?
You do seem like people of refined taste, without a doubt. But a man of class does not abandon his employer at an inopportune moment. I don't wish to speak out of turn, but this is a dangerous time for the bazaar. Friends, go inside. Speak to Mr. Jacob Martin, or as others call him, Flab. When the bazaar is safe again, my conscience will be clear, and I will be most pleased to join you. Naturally, I have a variety of goods for sale that could suit your needs. But let's not barter out here in the cold. Join me in the warmth and security of our encampment. This way, friends. If civilization collapses, all of Colorado Springs will look like this. Now, really quick, a whole bunch of comm stations will go down. I'll return afterwards. The Book of Nauseatingly Correct Manners, Chapter 1, On the Proper Use of Etiquette. It is a common misconception that etiquette exists as a means of affirming one's social status at the expense of the uninitiated. That is, it serves as a barrier to keep the uncivilized apart from their betters. Of course, Nothing could be further from the truth. Etiquette and proper manners are the glue that binds civilized society together. And it is the duty of civilized persons to educate the less fortunate for the betterment of all. Proper etiquette, gentle reader, is the balm that soothes the savage beast. You promised to buy me a new coat when we get inside, remember? I see you have come from afar. Well, your travels are amply rewarded, for you have reached the one and only, the seer of fortunes and teller of truths, the Great Gurn! Yes, I know, I know. Your ears can scarce believe what you're seeing. Ah, but it is indeed I, ready to tell your fortunes. Wisely chosen. Those who do not prepare for the future are clowns. To begin, you must think of your favorite color. Concentrate solely on the color. Let the color completely fill your mind. Estás ready? I see an ocean of waves. Your color is blue! Apologies! <laughs> I was impatient. Uh, now I see you're riding the waves toward the warmth of a red sun. It must be so. Red is the color you are thinking. Of course, of course, the story is not done. <laughs> it's not blue waves you are riding, it's blue ice. And the red sun, it is not you that moves toward it. It's the red flames that fly towards you. Uh... But then there is peace, and you are surrounded by trees, many green trees. Green must be the color you were thinking of. Relate, uh, it is not your fault. With time comes knowledge, and with knowledge comes clarity. I must know more before we can continue. Tell me, what is it that brought you to these lands? Ah, the most noble of sentiments. The image begins to grow clearer. Now I must know, for what purpose have you come to the bazaar? Yes, yes, fascinating. It's all coming together now. Listen carefully, for the fortune I tell you may very well save your lives and the lives of many. 
Your noble intent will drive you into great danger, but also great opportunity. Ride the three-headed goat. Your problem just became your stepping stone. Seize the moment. Ah, yes. A vision becomes clearer now. Now I can clearly see you standing before a red balloon. The red balloon bursts without warning, and you stand covered in red blood. Beware! <laughs> Beware! <laughs> that is uh, all I can see. Your path is hard, mamans. The fates have spoken to me. I must give you this key. May it be of no use. Uh, Flab is a cabron who wouldn't recognize talent if it bit him in the belly. He claims the monster army already has some kind of mechanical fortune teller. But how could a machine possibly match my intuition? My gift? My panache? Flab is the leader of the monster army and has been for many decades, growing fat and slothful all the while. <laughs> Beware the red balloon! Felicitations. Then I will endeavor to supply more answers. Aha, true cosmopolites, I see. Indeed, a Mannerite is one of the rare few fortunate enough to operate under the auspice of Mr. Manners, proponent of good behavior in these ugly times. Most of us reside in Angel Oracle, but I chose to travel and spread the word. We Mannerites believe that poise is only second to godliness. To live is to comport oneself with exquisite grace. If you're curious, I'd be more than happy to supply a copy of our holiest scripture, the Book of Nauseatingly Correct Manners. May it help you as much as it did me, and find your path to a life of civility. Hmm, of course. Our immediate environs are a safe area, protected by the monster army. Wander outside these confines, and safety is not guaranteed. I can't tell you more, as I've never ventured out there myself. They are the organization in charge of the bazaar. I've heard tales that once they were truly a monstrous gang, spreading fear all throughout Colorado. I'm happy to tell you that their current incarnation is much more sophisticated and civilized, though they have a ways to go. They are led by Mr. Jacob Martin, colloquially known as Flab the Inhaler, a man who has truly embraced his position and leads this place with panache. I do wish he had a better tailor, though. You can find him inside the bazaar proper, as he rarely ventures outside. I can only hope I will have the answers you seek. But of course. Yeah, a lot of things happened. First of all, I found a Cabbage Patch doll. I want a Garbage Pill Kid doll. Instead, I got a Cabbage Patch Kid. Oh, well. I didn't sell it. I'll just keep on to it. Use it as a lucky charm. And there's some nice supplies. It's just like the, uh, what do you call it, outside vendor. Minus the armor. Now, next up, we're going to visit Larry. Yeah, we're going to purchase a bird from him. Not any bird. Polly. Yeah, we're going to add Polly to the team. I'm going to make myself another challenge. Not only one, two animals, but three of them. I'm going to try to reach to the end. So here we go on this one. Howdy, strangers. Name Six Fingered Larry. Hunter. Though it seems you find me plumb out of wares. Him? <laughs> you don't want him. Barrett's got a bit of an attitude problem. Tried to peck his way through a kid's skull the other week. If you insist, though, you'll have to talk to Polly yourself, because I got no say in what he's going to do. All right. 
It's your funeral. Hey, Polly, you hear that, old buddy? These fine folks would like to adopt you. How's that sound? Larry, my buddy, my pal. <coughs> Come closer. <whistles> I'll show you how it sounds to me. <coughs> oh, shit. Damn it. That's how it fucking sounds to me, Larry. Sounds like some fucking bullshit. <coughs> Wasting your time with this asshole. Talk to Polly. Talk to Polly. <whistles> Polly wants you to gag on weak old shit leaking from a dead guy's ass. <whistles> Piss off, shit smear. Piss off. <whistles> Listen, shit for brains. <whistles> Someone has to stick around to make Larry's life miserable. <whistles> That's my job. I love that job. You hear that, Larry? Fuck you! <coughs> I... Well, shit, you're right, you circus reject. <coughs> I mean, you look like someone grafted a squid <coughs> to a diseased vulva. <coughs> but when you're right, you are right. <coughs> hey, Larry, I'm leaving! All right, he's yours if you pay the price. This sounds about fair, don't you think? Hell no! <laughs> hey, jizz for brains, Larry. Give them a discount or I'll fill your pie hole with parrot piss while you sleep. <laughs> ah, give me a second, give me a second, I'm trying here. Ah. <laughs> All right, all right. That price was a little high. How about this? Yeah, something's not right with you, but you have my respect. Enjoy the parrot and let me know if you need anything else. Yes, finally free at last! <laughs> Larry, Larry, yes, shit flake! At last I can tell you with complete sincerity! <coughs> Fuck you! Yep, that was some uh, good things. I got a nice bird out of it. Now, all I'm going to do is go ahead after I check everything out, make sure everything is okay. Talk to Larry once again, just get some more information. And let's go ahead and see what he knows. Hey, Polly. How have you been? A lot better for being free from your stink, you shit-stained cum rag! That's the Polly I know. And don't miss. What can I do for you? Who knows? I've only got five fingers on each hand. Same as anyone else. Maybe it's got something to do with the fact I'm good with my hands. <laughs> I'm not the sword who'd kiss and tell, though. Only that they make more money than I do. Bastards. But to answer your question, nah, I'm an honest businessman. I don't waste my time with criminals. Why don't you try the Mannerite? Yeah, the, the one with the suit. He knows all about the local lowlife. I'm no local, but ask me anything you want. I'll see if I can be useful. Me? Nah, I don't got the bona fides. That'd be Flab the Inhaler. He leads what's left of the monster army after the Patriarch gutted their ranks. As far as dictators go, he's actually not half bad. The Bazaar? It used to be something else. Now... It's just old and fat, wheezing through its last days. Easy pickings. What's on your mind? Be seeing you. Well, Larry point us to the guy in a suit. Good news is we got Polly. So now we got to bring to the end is a bird, a cat, and a two-headed goat named Billy and Jean. That's a reference to a Michael Jackson song. You don't know who Michael Jackson is? Well, I'll answer that in the comments. Now, next part... We're going to talk to the gatekeeper at the bazaar. Yeah, we're going to get some information. Also figure out how to get in. I'm not going to spend the money in this Let's Play. A lamb stands at the door. <laughs> what sacrifice do they bring to the door of monsters? <laughs> the lamb speaks. You know what? You asked me a straight question. 
question. Let's forget about the lamb nonsense. Sasara lies beneath your feet, covered by decades of snow. The only way in is through the gate beneath this RV. The only people who can open this gate, we, the monster army. If you want to get in here, you need to do one of two things. Buy an entrance pass, or get an established bizarre merchant to vouch for you. Sometimes we let Colorado's most famous in, but it's been years since such an exception was made. Huh, <laughs> that's nice. Doesn't mean shit to me, but I'm happy for you. More than it should, honestly. But that's what happens when one party has a monopoly on supply. Sorry. Anyway. Then you don't come in. This door is controlled from the inside, so you're stuck out there until you get your pass. Stay warm. There are two ways to get inside the bazaar. Number one, pay 500 Colorado dollars. I think it's non negotiable. Or number two, find the pass. Yeah, we're gonna go north for the pass. Now, before we do that, there's these, uh, what do you call it, spider mines. Think of it like the ones in StarCraft, except for you could take them out in one shot with a sniper rifle. Yep, see? That one shot. I'm gonna try to take them out one at a time. Now, I did this on my, uh, we're called trophy run to get no time for distractions. I just ran through it one time. They hurt. I mean, seriously, they hit hard. Yeah, see, they hit very, very hard. Now, here's the thing. We're going to keep on going a little bit, keep on chewing out mines. There will be radio messages throughout this entire area. One of them, I will have to edit out the music. Yeah, it's copyrighted. But still, the first one isn't. And you get a preview of our enemies in this area. And here we go on the first one. Stop for a food run. Got him a moon who took a wrong turn, and I'm bringing you back now. Orale! I'll get the cleavers ready. As I'm clearing out more spider mines, there'll be another radio message. This time's from DJ Rip. Unfortunately, it's a copyright music at one part, so let's listen on the radio. DJ RIP is back! Are y'all listening? This one is for the newly in love. Hope your heart's not gonna bleed too much. Ow! And the music in question, I think it's Monster Mash. It's been a long time since I listened to it. It fits with the bazaar. Now, if I see someone dress up like Elvira, yeah, I'm going to freak out. Seriously. That's part of my childhood. Now, I'm going to go ahead and clear out the rest of the spider mines before crossing the bridge. I do not want another factor in the next video, another battle. Okay, I got one. Let me try to shoot the other. That's a critical miss, everyone. Even though I got awareness to 10, still. I'll probably have to get sniper rifles up just to get a perfect shot. And let's see here. I'm going to try to do is take out the spider mine before we all get mauled by it. Now, I did uh, give greed, uh, we call it revolvers. If any pistols, we call small, I should say small guns from here on out, will be pistol related. You're asking why is that? Yeah, Lucia Wesson. Everyone, she's a really good character. She would have been my number seven if they would have had uh, what you call the third companion. They did that in Wasteland uh, 2, and that was really good. Yeah, I love my Ralphie, Rose, and Scotch Mo in that game. And we uh, took out the uh, Emmy within one round. If we didn't do it, we would have taken damage, and what you call squishies like Lucia would have died. Oh, that's not bad. That's some good stuff to sell. All right, more uh, junk. I'll probably sell that between what we call it takes. Now, there is a wolf. That's another animal to uh, tame. I'm going to be uh, careful on that. Now, I have to make sure there's an item for uh, someone else to tame it. I might consider bringing that, what you call it, there, just tame it. So this way, I could do it. As long as it has uh, one animal taming, I'll have someone like Greed have a wolf. There'll be four animals. Now, I'm going to get close to the bridge just to uh, set things up. I was supposed to end the video there. However, uh, we got a warning. And here's the thing. The music kept on playing. Yeah, Monster Mash kept on playing at this point. Now, like I said before, as soon as we get close by accident, Lewis here will threaten us. Well, I have that intimidation skill to throw it right back at him. 
no matter what you will uh, do, you say, Lewis will attack us. You are wondering how you know that. Well, I did my no time for distraction run. My character was weaker. It took me quite a few tries to get used to the battle. It, this one was not easy at all. I'm going to most likely uh, go over the tactics in the next, next video. Now here's the thing. Lewis is guarding the refugees. And that next video, we're going to have to go ahead and take care of them by uh, taking out these uh, smugglers. Still, this was nice uh, conversation. So let me go ahead and give everybody a nice recap. We raided the West End house, got most of the stuff, including a gold cable. Yeah, we got a nice gold cable. Then, of course, we arrive at the bazaar and got some nice things out of it, including a parrot named Polly. Took out some spider mines, listened to some radio, and had some fun. Now, in the next video, I'll still be in the bazaar exterior. However, I'm going to clear a whole bunch of that out. Well, this is it for my Wasteland 3 Part 14 walkthrough video, the Bizarre Exterior Part 1. This is Lord Fenton signing off. Thank you for watching and have a wonderful day or night. Please stay safe. Please subscribe to my channel for more content like this. If you do like what you see, hit that subscribe button and check out my suggestions on the upper left hand corner or the bottom left hand corner YouTube suggestion. Have a wonderful day or night. Please stay safe.